So uh, Jared Neesham not frightened to sit players down and give them a, a think about the game if they're not performing to what he expects. He's trying to get the balance right, I think, isn't he, with uh, Peniza going off in particular. Well, Hall's been a problem for him. Uh, Hall's controlled centre-half forward, and uh, he's gone with Southern there now, and uh, after Southern's been switched off for Zemplis, so... Uh, a multiplication of uh, problems in the Claremont defence and uh, Nisham's opted for what he thinks is, is the best remedy. And Valentine and Painter sitting down for West Perth. Nelson has had the better of Wolf. Yes, and across uh, Claremont's half forward line, they need some more from Muir and people like that. I said he's spasmodic, he needs to be more consistent, as does Morgan. So the second half gets underway with Nelson rising high and winning the tap again. It's a bit too slick there for Milton Hall and Malone feeds Brendan Green. And the Tigers into attack very quickly. Jones up from the side, from the back, the destroyer there was Edwards. Into the path though of Muir, who hand passes straight back to Hasler who missed it. It was knocked into the path of Mitchell, good spoil by Hasler. Beautiful smother in fact. And it lands with Nelson who kicks to the members wing. Hall's got plenty of work to do, he's outnumbered. But he gets away from Southern. The whistle has sounded and he went out of bounds. Playing with a lot of confidence, Derek, uh, Derek Hall there. Just didn't quite measure his, uh, his run along the boundary line. Seven possessions for him so far. Good tap then by Wolf. Green scrambles the kick. Leading back in the race is Tuvi. Got an awkward bounce. Green breaks away. Good hand pass upfield towards Mitchell. Mitchell inboard too far for Leach. Muir's there though. Good shepherd put on uh, Hasler by Leach. Bought Muir some time. From 55 metres he spears it into Gerine. That's good football, Tigers. Preci precision there. Good, accurate. Mitchell's handball wasn't quite on the spot, but he did. S he had created the loose man and set up this play. Their handball today and use of handball has been in stark contrast to West Perth. Now, Jerine from 35 metres on a 45 degree angle. For the booze of the section of the crowd, but the drop punt looks okay. He splits the middle. Good kick, Chris Jerine. His second goal of the match. And increases the lead to eight points for the Tigers now. The Tigers getting, getting a good, good confidence start there. Um, West Perth had a chance here, but Green stole it. And he, he, was in, he was one of the personal, personnel insti instigated in this forward attack there. Muir, I said that Claremont need more for him, but need more consi consistency. Here you see plenty of time to deliver to Jerine and uh, did a good job. And they need to, Claremont need more from a player like Mitchell and Muir those type of players. Wolf does well again at that centre bounce. Chance for Green who overruns the ball. Chance now for Harris. He knocks it up towards Curley. He's surrounded. He's holding the ball. Again, he tried to go back through the tackle. He couldn't have got rid of it in the end, but perhaps had the opportunity initially. The free kick is with Malone. Square again towards centre wing and Southern has come down a long way. Chips the ball down towards Leach. Close to the line. He got there in the nick of time. So Claremont lead by eight points. As Leach kicks towards the 50 metre line and Morgan was pulled out of it and has received the free kick. Well, I think West Perth, to a lot of football supporters, have been viewed with some suspicion this season. There's been questions as to whether or not they are a genuine premiership contender. They have every chance here to prove to the football public that they are. Just eight points behind Claremont at the, in the early stages of the third quarter. Now what's Morgan doing? Could get away 50 if he's not careful. Freeman, Jones now called to play on as he kicks towards centre wing and Hall, but a good mark taken by Southern. And Southern chips over the top and again Green has created the loose man. But he can't hold that mark. He's certainly been in the thick of things today. Claremont are, possessions. Claremont are persisting with uh, pinpointing that 25 to 30 metre pass. They just want to keep gaining possession, they just move the ball, they zigzag it into their forward line with possession all the time. Malone down to Green was clever, now Morgan on the end of it, he earned the mark. It's a strong mark isn't he? It's 55 metres out and you see Jones made him go to the ground with it. He goes in short, Jerine again's on a lead and he's running Freeman around at the moment and the way he drops it onto his boot, he's a lethal kick. He's a danger man if he can break loose, and he's done that. <laughs> he's 
getting some advice from Craig Nelson. He's about a metre behind him. And Jerome's pointed that out to the umpire too. There was a breeze coming over his shoulder that he didn't want. <laughs> so from 35 to 40 metres, the drop punt will come back, but not enough. And he's missed by quite a way, in fact. That's a West Perth camp there. I think it's a West Perth house, Trev. And a lot of support for the, for the Falcons here this afternoon. And it's Freeman who favours the outer side. Leaders from Nelson in front of Wolf. Up he goes, couldn't hold the mark, but he was being interfered with. And Nelson again with the free kick on his own defensive 50 for the Falcons. Not a lot on offer, although now Edwards jogs down, but he ignores that and kicks to the wing on the outer side. Hall up, can't hold the mark. Malone the crumbs and yeah. throws it out. Got away with it. Edwards boots it upfield. And a boundary throw in. And there's the Claremont support. From behind Tuvi, Wolf almost clean possession. Green tried to get away with it. And now Muir to Mitchell. Mitchell finessing, gave it back to Muir, caught by Tuvi, loses it. Still he goes, Muir throws it to Morgan, and this time he's been pinned. Well, this third quarter has started at a, a very leisurely pace in comparison to the pace that the first half was played at. As O'Brien takes the mark and plays on quickly, he finds Mildenhall. Kick it came up to close him down, but that's left West running free. Now Gary Edwards goes back to block that move. Milden Hall kicks towards the 50 metre line and Simmons good kick. Good strong lead. Ballantyne's getting a bit frustrated. The Claremont defence has been fully tested at times this afternoon. As Simmons lines up from about 55 metres. It hasn't quite got the distance and that's Lax marking again. Down by Curley. So Curley, from a very tight angle, has gone back a long way, which will give him room to step out if he wants to, although Hendry's watching that. Now he plays on and spears it towards goal. And he must have missed to the near side, I think. So the Falcons get another behind. They move to 8 5, Clermont a 9 7. Tinted windscreens there for the coaches. As Southern sizes up the options and finally goes short. Oh, and Claremont players Beresford and Scott Edwards got tangled up. Edwards came down with the mark. He's still in the back pocket, and again, the options have dried up. Very he, indecisive by Claremont. He hasn't the game slowed down from that intense uh, first half. This really is quite pathetic by Scott Edwards. If he was coming out to bat, they'd give him out. <laughs> The kick to the wing on the outer side, Morgan up, couldn't hold the mark. He's the best to recover. Han Malone in front of the old scoreboard. Oh. Pumps it to half forward, but straight to Damon. So quite a few mistakes have crept in in this third quarter so far. Damon goes square. O'Brien. Now West Perth can build something up. There's a player loose at half forward. He ignores that and goes into the middle to Nelson. West had broken. Nelson's silly hand pass. A lot of work now to do for Valentine. Oh. Crashing into him was Green. O'Brien emerges from backward of the wing. Finally, it finds its path to West, where it perhaps should have gone in the first place. His kick lacks depth too. Coming to meet it is uh, Valentine. Goes inboard, cut off by West. Knocks it to Hall. Now Hall and West are sort of wax about with each other. And finally, Hendry <laughs> at close quarters trying to give it away. <laughs> it's knocked a, over the line. It's sort of like, I'm a bit hot. You, you take it and take the heat off me oh, and put yes. the heat on Valentine. Let's Not see if we can pass it to each other without getting seen. <laughs> Dale Ball Ballantyne, a handful of coals. <laughs> Hall and Wolf wrestling, and the umpires picked out a kick. It'll be taken by West Perth's Hall. Maybe a little lucky in that situation. Seven possessions for Derek Hall. And he'll put this at the top of the square. Went for the big torpedo. Claremont, too strong in defence, and Southern pulls down the mark. Well, he wants to play on. He's got support back there now from Brayshaw. Brayshaw is under pressure from Zemplis. Something of a miss kick, but it found Southern. That's a superb hand pass. 30 metres. Sends Malone away. Mitchell is loose. And Mitchell will want to go. He'll try and get around Tuvi. 
Clemens loose, but he's gone to a more central lead, and Malone had run on strongly, and he takes the mark almost on the 50 metre line. But gee, it really is being paid at a leisurely pace at the moment, this game. Not a lot of running, hard running football. Some loose checking, like that. Oh, heavens above. That's a tough call on Mitchell. Looked like a mark. Big in danger too. Play allowed to go on. Hand comes in to try and tidy things oh, up. Well, umpire Vernon lost it there. Yeah, and one mistake leads to another. And that's a shame because it wouldn't have mattered what Vernon had done there. He couldn't redeem himself. So no, the umpires have been so solid in the first half. Very, very good they've been. And nobody's bothered to get on the mark, so Milton all's off. He's away. Hand comes across to check him now. The kick goes deep towards full forward and Hall's got away from Southern. So an interesting transformation in this short passage of play and perhaps those uh, decisions there will lift the tempo a little. Might raise the ire of a few players. Stir their lethargy or their apathy as the kick from Hall is very close. It's a goal. Well, not the, not the uh, tonic Clement would have needed there. I mean, all that, although the umpires made a decision and the, 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 the play was a sort of in a heated uh, situation, West Perth did the best out of this. Milton Hall sh showed some initiative and got on with the job. Hall made the break and uh, Southern hasn't had the best of days, although this quarter he's, he's turned his form around a little, let Hall away and Hall made him pay. Painters back on the ground. And Todd Curley's off, the ball up for grabs in the middle, Milton Hall with courage in there, and he got a push in the back. He's been a very good player. Look at the kick. Intercepting there was Muir, it was meant for Edwards. Hasler's got the loose football. He's caught, loses it in the tackle, holding the ball the decision. You've got to be quick. And he wasn't quick enough. So Muir kicks towards the members' wing. Painter arriving late on Malone. Away he goes. Robbie Malone inside centre half forward. Jones has got a double back. With him is Morgan. Jones is a clean possession. Swings it out wide. Han and Mifka out there. Plenty of pace. The bounce favours Mifka, who slaps towards the boundary and again, and finds the safety of the white line. Han and Mifka have had a very good battle uh, for the first half of this game. They haven't played on one another all the way through the quarter, but or the, the first half, but a very enthralling battle. Toofy doing the ruck work. Wolf is far too tall for him. Slaps it towards Clem, who knocks it back into the path of Green. Run down by Painter. Rusted in the tackle. Milgren Hall's there. And again, he's solid as a rock in defence. And with good vision, finds Mifka. Forward of the 50. Hall is forward of the play on a lead. It's too far for him. The spoiler was Southern. And Mitchell closing in on it rapidly. Sees Malone in board, but he goes longer. And it's Morgan at the back. Getting a fist in there was Jones. Green's out there though for Claremont with Ibn Smithka. Green very clever, goes back to hand. He's inside 50. Bumped as he kicked by Damon. It's offline. Jerome Smart, but I think he's over the line. No, he's not. He's called to play on. He makes a bit of ground and kicks a clever goal. The big question mark, was he over the line? Well, the goal umpire was right on the right on the line and he kept his hands behind his back, so obviously he was the man in charge. But Han here, I talked about the battle him and Mifka were having. Well, he broke away on this occasion. You see the goal umpire right on the job. Although Freeman hasn't got a whistle, so he couldn't make the decision. <laughs> Jerrion played on. It was a very intelligent uh, play on there. Open up the goal mouth and he kicked his third for the, for the day and certainly been a thorn in the West Perth uh, back line. Well, if you're a goal umpire, I don't think you'd volunteer to go down to that end in this, in this football this afternoon. As Malone kicks Claremont towards the half-forward line, Morgan tries to knock it on. Mitchell, with sheer skill, gets the ball to Green, and that was cleverly done too, to go back the other way. Beresford caught under it, Damon over the top. The ball too far to the front of the pack for West Perth's sake. Mitchell didn't see Valentine coming, and no. he's penalised for a throw. Well, I mean, it must have almost been a push in the back too, I would think. One would thought so. And they count. Now West Perth can play on around the members' side of the ground. Jones has pushed off the kick. Edwards is up. And opposing him was uh, his was namesake, Tony. And the ball comes off hands and goes out of play at the interchange gates. Throw in on left centre wing for West Perth. 
Clem on to 10-7, West Perth a 9-5. West Perth working with the breeze for the final, term, final time in this second semi-final. Gary Edwards collided with Green and that gave Valentine the opportunity to fight an honourable draw for West Perth in that passage and there'll be a bounce down in the same area. Breeze has freshened a bit too, Noel. Yes, and the other, other thing that's freshened has been Ke Kevin Mitchell and Brendan Green, the smaller players for Claremont. They've freshened a little with the breeze, and Darren Harris has gone out the game for West Perth. Hasler pushed off the kick, but it landed inside the field of play. It was Green's hand pass that went straight to Hasler. But another throw in, this time right in the centre of the interchange gates. Left centre wing for West Perth. Nelson is there, and with him is Wolf. Wolf did better that time. Here's Green again. From right centre wing, kicks the ball to the 50 metre line. Jones and Morgan. Play on is the call. Mitchell runs onto the ball. Morgan gave a good shot. But oh, look at the kick from Mitchell. Just missed. It was a clever kick. But it just missed. West Perth supporters unhappy with Vernon. Tuvi coming off and Wade Star to go back on. The lookalikes. Tuvi and Star. Mm. Freeman back into play for Nelson. Doesn't let him down and quickly goes around the corner. It was very good vision by the captain because he's given Mifter a break. In Don't pursuit look back. Hand. <laughs> and Hand will could worry him out of it. In fact, he did. Good tackle by Scott Edwards there. And Scott Edwards backs himself oh. up. That was legit. Good fair buck off screen. Morgan up behind Jones. Damon tracks it to the boundary and will rein it in. Claremont troops closing, Damon cornered, hooks it around his body, close to the white line over on the full. So was Scott Edwards almost. Tigers have rallied a bit here and look a bit dangerous. Damon fists away. Wolf knocks it on. Shovel towards Malone from 45 metres. He lines up and is straight with the kick. Tigers look ominous halfway through this third quarter. And again, West Perth have to answer the challenge, now. Yes, and they've got to answer it in a big way. We, we said uh, for the first ten minutes after the after the quarter started, both sides looked like they weren't going too many places at all. But uh, now Cle Claremont have got the uh, the pedal to the pedal to the metal, and it looks like they, you know they're going to take it up to the, the West Perth players as Peniza prepares to come back on, and uh, he's replacing Gary Edwards. The margin slips out to 15 points. Claremont on top. They led by 13 points at quarter time, just two points at half time. Muir with a chance to take it out of the centre. He was collared by Lambourne. His hand goes around Lambourne. Swings the ball to the members' wing, but it's ill-directed. Oh. O'Brien couldn't control it. Favours Panizza. Panizza's kick's not a good one. Intended for Morgan. Jones is with him. Back they go like a pair of Big Macs trying to turn there in a narrow streak too. This is a, this is a Valentine to Painter. Painter up towards centre wing. Oh, it bounces off O'Brien's chest, gives Leach the chance. O'Brien went in very solidly on Leach. And uh, Leach, I don't know that it was a free kick, but certainly went in hip and shoulder head high. Costly miss there by O'Brien. Good kick, that one. It's found Panizza, who's drifted down towards right half foot. Oh, he took the ball off him. But Panizza has the kick at right half forward. Peniza looks inside 50. The lead is from Jerine. It won't have the carry, and Jones takes a well-judged mark. And Mifka is away on the outer side of the ground. This time, Hands got him cornered. And Mifka obviously realised that. Oh, that could have been 50. Silly play by Clem. Silly football. Got drawn into that, didn't he? And now Mifka charges up to wherever the mark is going to be. Well, when's the umpire going to get back there to make the decision? He's just working it out. I think he was... Oh, he wants it to go where he is, not where the players are. You've got to step it out, no? It was interesting. He sort of centralised it all, didn't he? <laughs> yes. Lambourne has it now. Gets around Leach. Chips it into half forward. West Perth still well and truly in this game. Starr has the mark just outside 50 metres. He goes high. Intended for Zemplis. And anyone else down there that can take a mark. Cleverly off hands by Simmons, but then went without it. That's Harris oh, who's hooked back there. on goal. And the mark has been taken for West Perth, they play on quickly towards Star. it's come unstuck, no it hasn't, Clement with Curley. Well, Clement were able to destroy Star's attempt at a mark. I think that was Edwards that played on there, Wally. Was it? But they were able to knock it straight, well, they, sorry, they knocked it straight back to Todd Curley, who swung around and kicked 
West Perth's 10th, I think it is. Well, West Perth, whatever, yes, it was their 10th, but they're working very hard to get their goals. Clem wanted to get him a little easy. You see Harris, he's been a little quiet for this quarter. A nest of West Perth players there. Now, he, he, Edwards wanted to open up the play a little, so he went he went for a centering kick, but the Claremont players were on it. Leach destroyed the ball straight to Todd Curley. But Claremont are on the move again. They kick it a centre-half forward from the side. The destroyer was Hasler. Beresford runs onto it. Gets his kick in around the corner and Green misses the mark. Should have taken that. Recovers quickly. Goes towards Muir. Muir and Malone get tangled up and they've lost it. Although it squirts out towards Green in the pocket. He hooks towards the square. And Jerine is there with Freeman. And Freeman pushes it over for a force behind. It was like a lolly scramble there for a while. Well. Claremont have given away 50 have given away five 50 meter penalties in this game. Gee, that's undisciplined, isn't it? 250 meters is a long way. A lot of kicks. Especially if you're running. Nelson's been paid over over the shoulder. Could have been the mark anyway, really. But umpire Vernon has paid the free kick. And he torpedoes it 60 meters towards half forward. And Hall being held or pushed. No, it's West with a free kick. Hall was the one who rose in the pack. West plays on quickly. Long kick towards the square. One out is Zemplis. And he's almost done it. Surely he'll get the kick. He's paid. I think he's going to give him a free kick for sure. Well, he never signalled whether it was a mark or a free kick, Trevor. No. Yes, he is now. He's signalling oh. up to Brayshaw. And Brayshaw is not happy. It wasn't his jumper. He said, I had it. He had it on mine. <laughs> yeah. A little bit soft, but it could have been the push in the back. It wasn't, though. But it wasn't the, uh, what he paid, no. For number five, Zempler shoots. He's got it. So West Perth are back in the game, now. Well, they never, haven't been out of the game, but they look like they, they've taken uh, a little bit of pressure off the, off the Claremont uh, players there early in that quarter. Now they're starting to come back. They've shut down the Greens and the Mitchells, as I said, were starting to get away for Claremont. Big Nelly's taken a couple of good marks, drove him uh, into attack with good kicks. Hall's getting on the end of the ball, creating a, a few things for the smaller players. So it's starting to happen once again for West Perth, but they had a little rest period there. They're back to within four points, the Falcons. Beresford can't control it. Mitchell gets it to kick it, lost his footing. That's intended for Clem. With him is West, Troy West. Clem did best. He's holding the ball, play allowed to go on. Tried to get through that first tackle, taken by Simmons. Back towards half forward, Star charges at it. Free and kick. a West Perth player is flattened behind play. That's Simmons, so it's a free kick to the Falcons. Silly football by Claremont, they had possession on the half back line. Star kicks inside 50. The target is Curley. The mark missed by Scott Edwards. This is Brayshaw. They're coming across to meet him from all angles. Well done, gets it to Peniza. Beyond the 20 minute mark in the third quarter as Peniza bounces his way around the members wing. Oh, delayed the kick, bit fancy. Ballantyne, he's under all sorts of pressure. Holding the ball. Play on the call. Taken by Lamborn. It goes straight back to centre half forward and Hall. Up with Southern, play allowed to go on. Hendry gets it infield, again a bad hand pass. Oh, pretty much Leach pressure. is there, he gets it to Southern. He's usually more purposeful. Puts it to the outer wing, but it's gone too far for hand and Mifka will get there first. Mifka looks to half forward. Hall is 20 metres in the clear. Kicker will bridge that gap pretty quickly. Kicker took his eye off the ball. Comes back to retrieve the situation and ties it up. Well played, Dale Kicker. He stood Hall up a big start. Great play by both clubs there. You saw Mifka, he picked off hand. Hand, that ball was going for hand, but Mifka just read it so well and got there first. And then Dale Kicker did a good job for his club. Both sides really playing good football now. Kicker gave him a Mount Eden start, didn't he, well? <laughs> Edwards. Still it's Edwards. Forced a hand pass away under severe pressure. Good courage by Nelson. Dived in at the feet of the pack there. And now O'Brien, beautiful foot pass. And Harris has marked inside centre-half forward, but still 50 metres out. Probably right in the true centre-half forward position. He's had a good game. As Clinton Wolf comes off, Trevor, and he's going to re be replaced by Joe Smith. Kick it stands the mark for young Harris. He'll pole well in the Sandover medal, this young man. He's had a good season, and from 50 metres, it's a big kick for a little man. And he's found the target. They're in front. Falcons hit the front. 
Although the Tigers will come home with what breeze there is in the last corner. Well, a steady influence there for West Perth is Darren O'Brien through the centre. You see him with this ball here after uh, one or two players tried to turn the ball over. Well done by so, there, wasn't it? So, yes, good play by Nelly, but so composed. He uses the ball every time he gets it. What a tragedy, he's had a couple of bad uh, leg injuries, but then young Harris, point size, smallest player on the ground, I'd say. Who had a sensational first half. I thought he was clearly West Perth's best player in the first half. Has now chipped in with a good goal and has put West Perth in front for the first time for quite a while. They lead by two points and this is when that emotion and spirit that West Perth play on becomes so important when they get a taste of victory or a sense of victory as Panizza gets a hurried kick towards the members wing. Bounce is important. In fact, it beat everyone including Hasler. But he comes back and gets a second chance. Puts it out in front of Simmons. Malone is there. The hand pass has gone astray. Good shepherd by Ballantyne, but Clement have messed it up. Troy West gets control. No, he doesn't get control of the ball. Muir does. Muir looks for options at half forward. That's not a good kick. And Davis goes back into the flight with the flight of the ball to take the mark. Jones kicks to the outer side. He's missed kick. Taken by kick and has run a long way. Chips the pass into centre half forward and Beresford marks. Well, Kickett was at full stretch to try and elude Mifka. He was given the benefit of the doubt there by the umpire. Now Beresford will kick from just inside 50 metres. His team has surrendered the lead. And that won't regain it. The margin is one point. Well, we had a terrific first semi-final. There was little between Swans and Subi for three quarters of the game. And I think we're set for a similar finish here in the second semi-final as Freeman brings the ball into play. Hasler is the target. He'll get to it. Gets a beautiful bounce too. And gets his kick in ahead of Muir. Up towards centre wing. Hendry met it at full tilt. It's spinning like a top. Well claimed by Leach. Good support from Panizza. Panizza looks back towards the half forward line. Malone in front. Smith got to the front in fact. The ball comes towards Hasler. He taps it down to Harris. Harris sends it in for with a good hand pass to Painter. Painter from left half back kicks the centre half forward. Valentine best place. Couldn't take the mark. This is Hand. Hand confronted by Nelson. Gets around him. Kicks in the direction of Smith. But he was outmaneuvered cleverly by Freeman. By the freezer. Beautiful use of the body but a shocking kick. Set up his teammate Harris, who's hurt as a result of that. Clem now fires it into the forward line again. Clem on through Morgan, but fisting away is Jones. West is there. With him is Kickett. And Kickett will worry the life out of him. Could have been picked off by Mifka, who missed him. And a good shepherd there by Damon. Brought a lot of time there as West Perth go forward. Into the forward area. Hall with him Southern. And he's holding Southern, according to the umpire. Harris is up, he doesn't look too good, but he's, he's up on his feet and that'll be a good sign for West Perth supporters. It was a result of a mistake, Noel, that he got hurt. Yes. A kick into the middle of the ground, Nelson sets, yeah. uncontested. Geraint out of position. And that's a flaw in his game, Chris Geraint. Going to be a good player, just lacks a little bit of endeavour. The kick towards centre-half forward, going one-handed star, best to recover. Slick hands, curly, standing start, missed. Now it's a free kick. He's put down, was he? I didn't see what happened, but the umpire went straight to where he was. Says, he started Curly, the kick, and Clem again. Well, is it, Clem's and Deer has made him miss the first time, so I would say it wasn't far away from, uh, from being a, a play-on situation. So, West Perth, a chance to extend their lead close to three-quarter time, off the boot of Todd Curley. He stabs and puts it through. And for our country viewers, we're about to be joined by city viewers. As three goals go on the board now to Todd Curley. So he's yep. standing by for that cross, no? I can't help but be uh, impressed by the effort young Troy West has put in. I know he's playing on one of the most exciting players in the league in Dale, in Dale Kickett, but he's really he's set, he's set a few things up for West Perth and been very, very instrumental in some of their goals. West, lifted, as I said, Harris is lifted, star, folks like that are really putting the West Perth in the picture. Thank you, Noel. And welcome everyone around WA to this second semi-final, West Perth in front, 83 to 76.
The third quarter hasn't been as high a standard as the first half of the game, but it certainly has livened up in the last 10 minutes or so. With West Perth on a roll as Lambourne kicks long towards full forward and Southern takes a spectacular mark, crashing through the pack. Wally Foreman, Noel Carter and Tanya Armstrong are with me today as we look at this second semi-final in almost perfect oh. conditions. Starr had it, lost it. Edwards, Milton Hall now for West Perth. He goes out wide, Mifka's floated down from 50, he goes inboard. Beautifully weighted but Curly misses it. Sitter was touched by Clem. Play on the call now. Now the umpire's going to bring it back. But really this has been a game of high quality and as you saw with that final quarter in the first semi-final also a very interesting battle between Subiaco and Swans with the Lions coming out on top. Wally Foreman you've had a marathon day. It's been a very exciting day though Trevor. Terrific first semi-final and now an equally as exciting second semi-final and West Perth really are lifting here in the dying moments of the third quarter. Nelson in strife but gets out of the trouble. Kicks back towards full forward. A late goal here would really lift West Perth. Southern up in front. Clem at the ground level. Gets it to Panizza. Panizza goes back to Ballantyne. Ballantyne further afield to Green and Clemont work their way out of defence. Good kick has found Malone. We're beyond the 30 minute mark of the third term. There can't be much time left. The ball is chipped to Gerine in the centre of the ground. Clermont, perhaps the only team now that could mount another attack, although I doubt that it's time for either. High kick in the direction of Morgan and Jones. Morgan wanted the kick. Comes to Beresford. Claimed by Damon. The hand pass has gone astray. And now the hand pass goes towards the boundary line from Troy West. Throwing it left half forward. Crowd West Perth this game now, aren't they? West Perth playing with terrific spirit as they have throughout the season. Morgan is up in front, clean possession. Feeds the hand pass to Muir. Muir from 52 metres towards full forward. Smith can't take the mark. Kick it has the ball. Hooks back on goal. Can't pull it back far enough. It's out on the full. And there's the siren. It's three quarter time. And West Perth have put themselves into a position from where they can win this game. 13-5 to 11-10, just seven points the difference, but they've been behind most of the day. Yes, they trail by 13 points. Just at the end of the first quarter. <laughs> Eight-day week now it is. <laughs> and what a brilliant move by coach Jeff Beeson to include Basil Zempelis in this game. He's kicked five goals. Chris Ryan has also been very handy around the goals for Claremont. As you can see, he's kicked three. Clem, their leading goal scorer with four. But Zempelis having a day out on his return to West Perth with five goals. And Todd Curley also in good support with three. So what a last quarter this promises to be now with West Perth 13-5-83 leading the Tigers 11-10-76. And as you can see by that, the only real marked difference has been the handballs. Claremont have spun that ball around very quickly with handball right throughout the day, Noel. Yes, we've and mentioned created a lot of opportunities for them. We have mentioned, and it's created a lot of turnover opportunities for the West Perth uh, half-forward line because a lot of those handballs come out of defence across the half, half-back line through the centre and uh, they've certainly caused a few turnovers as well. And uh, that's that's what why West Perth are in this game. I think that Claremont have... As they've done throughout the season, they have finessed with the ball and some of the finessing with the pressure of this uh, final on them has caused those turnovers. Big Basil Zempelis in the middle of that pack. It's been a long time since we've seen a player come in as Les Fong looks on at that West Perth huddle and to be as damaging as that. Yeah, what a plus for Geesh has been. He lost his big man Downsborough and be able to have uh, uh, Zempelis come, off the come in from the... You know, from the cold and do what he's done, sensational stuff. Ten goals in the two quarters to West Perth has certainly been the turnaround in this game. But the Tigers, by the same token, with the endeavour and the class that they've got, Noel, they're far from out of this game. Well, they've, they've uh, controlled the game. Even though West Perth have been playing on the motion, Claremont have been pl playing on with their finesse and their, and their good skills. They've, they've had a lot more of the play, but West Perth have just pumped that ball forward and... Uh, 
even in that in that third quarter in the first 10 minutes when things were when we thought things had slowed down to snail's pace Claremont still controlled the game but then all of a sudden the grandstand came alight West Perth came alight and we got some emotion back in the game that was there in the in the second half of, in the second latter part of the second quarter We've seen some sterling efforts from both uh, players on both sides, some amazing individual efforts in this game, and Christian Ryan at times has been one of the players for Claremont that has burst into the limelight, and uh, he was very effective here. He shows a lot. Sometimes you'd like to get hold of a player like Geron and give him a good shake because you think he could give you more, but uh, propped in this goal square, he's very, very dangerous. Propped in this goal square, he's very, very dangerous. He showed good initiative to play on from that mark. The goal umpire was right on it. Peter Freeman wasn't too happy about the decision, but yes, one of the three. Oh, that was one of his three good goals for the for the half, uh, the three quarters so far. Certainly, a developing player for the Claremont Tigers is Chris Ryan, almost obscured there. But by what, they, what Claremont have got is you can see you see Mark Hand has been a, a real good player for him there, and uh, David Muir. Blokes like well, people like Muir flash in and out of the game. Claremont haven't had that consistency. West Perth Huddle, Geeshan obviously with a great chance of sending the Falcons into the grand final for the first time since 1975 and obviously that incentive must be at the back of their minds when they go in at this last quarter now. I think they've got a lot of incentive and I think the thing is, you know, wooden spooners last year, in the last, years in a row. last game of the season, Claremont played, last season, Claremont played West Perth for the right to the wooden spoon. Here we've got them playing in, two, in the second semi-final, you know, finished one, two uh, for the season. So what a turnaround it can be and uh, sure, I'm, I'm sure that the Falcons would like to go to Joondal up uh, as reigning premiers. Well, Harris, he's been a live wire. He brings it back, and Curly Edwards takes the mark, and he plays on quickly here. And Lux of Fortune for West Perth, Noel. Yeah, Lux of Fortune, all right. <laughs> it was a great destroy, but unfortunately for Leach, it went the wrong way. You're talking about those wooden spoons. You should see our house. It's terrific when we have soup. Everyone's got a spoon, <laughs> and in that household, everyone's got a tiger in their tank. Salad days, we'd call them, with those wooden spoons. That's uh, true, that's true. It's terrific when you go play those little tunes while at three-quarter time. 13-5-83, 11-10-76. Jared Neesham knows the challenge that's ahead of his players here because next week the loser will take on a very enthusiastic Subiaco in the preliminary final and that won't be an easy task for either side. Is that an enthusiastic smile there or is that a worried smile? Well, I'd say he'd be concerned. But by the same token, he knows that he's got a very talented group of players out there at his disposal. Well, he's made the first move of trying to win this game. I think he's going to. I think you find Kickett's gone straight into the centre of the ground, which uh, he's going to. He's going to have to play his shots now. There's no defending now. They've got nothing to defend. They must attack all the time. I just wonder how much influence that breeze will be in the last term, Noel. It's been fluctuating throughout the day. It's got up to about 20 kilometres an hour now, blowing into that right full forward pocket. It's certainly favouring Claremont. It will favour Claremont, but as you know here, with the big grandstand, uh, three-tiered grandstand at the other end, you can attack around the uh, the members' wing and 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 score quite easily. Good goals. Uh, going into what would look like to be the breeze. Tanya, there must be plenty of tension down there as we go into this last quarter. Lots of tension, Trevor. Both coaches trying to get that little bit extra out of their players by screaming at the top of their voice. Jared Neesham said, look, the players in a space. They had no run that quarter and it was a poor quarter. He said they have a ca the capacity to win the game and you might notice that Joe Smith has gone into the ruck. He's thrown him into the ruck. Jeff Geeshan said they must use the ball and keep possession, run the ball and look for a player in a space. And he said there's no excuses. He thinks they're the fittest team in the competition and this is the quarter to show it. Thanks, Tanya. West Perth lead by seven points, and now 50-metre penalty. That's the sixth against Claremont this afternoon, and that's a statistic that Jared Neesham will not be pleased with. Peter Freeman. Well, that's that's 70 metres at least, that, uh, that free kick. Well, that's, that's poor football, and that's poor football too. Nelson was unguarded on centre wing, so West Perth will make the second charge at the forward line, but Southern goes up to take the mark. Gets the hand pass off to Hendry. Hendry's kick around the outer side of the ground is intended for Green and it stays in play. Good hand pass to Malone. Now the Tigers can set something up. Not a good kick, it carries kick it. Player up over the top was West, Troy West. Kicks back towards centre wing but puts it straight out of play on the full. A few mistakes there. Bit of pressure. And now Leach with the football in front of the old scoreboard. He thumps it towards half forward. Jones up, Morgan misses the mark. Painter bumped over by Mitchell. Mitchell recovers brilliantly. Clem! Oh, oh 
he lost his footing at a vital moment. And now West mops up for the Falcons. Deep in defence, cornered and out of bounds. So a lot of mistakes being made. Darren Clem's had one of those days, hasn't he? He's kicked four goals. but yeah, He's done some very good things, but he's made a lot of mistakes. And that's how you're assessed at the end of the day. Freeman, good knock to the side of the pack. Hasler around his body. The half-back, Leach in front, though. And takes a well-judged mark. So he'll pump this back. A high kick, looking for a leaping forward. Jones up in front. Jeremiah's in the pack, comes to Muir. Shocking hand pass, straight to Freeman, who hand passes wide. O'Brien runs onto it, deep in his own defensive area. That hand pass is ill-directed also. But Mildenhall, oh. like Houdini, keeps it in play. It looked to be out, but he still goes to half-back. They kick the half-forward, Hall and Southern. Henry pushes towards the line. Southern knocks it over. West Perth lead by six points. Seven points into this last term. The ball is between right centre wing and right half forward for the Falcons. Nelson gets front position. Decisive ruck knock, but straight back towards the boundary line. Cleverly done by Lamborn. He made about 15 metres for the Falcons. Throw in about 60 metres from their goal. Is that with his broken arm walk? I don't know, but he gave it a whack. He did, didn't he? Looked as though he was going straight back out of play. Nelson and Smith again. Smith does better this time. Gets it to the back of the pack. Taken in there by Gary Edwards. This is Southern. Across he goes to, to Peniza. It didn't carry. That's a better hand pass. Good now way. Green is away and a good shepherd provided by Smith. Green pushed in the back. Play allowed to go on and Muir takes the mark. Chips the ball to half forward. Who's that intended for? I think Gary Edwards. Smith got there. Smith was uh, taken late, but I think... It's fairly soft. Yeah, the player was committed to what was happening. And I think that was Green. But he was very fair about a green. He didn't poke anything out. He tucked everything up and uh, did as least damage as he could there. I think the Greg Jones has been very, very solid across the half-back line for the West Perth side. Milden Hall has the ball, and I think he's going to take the kick. The umpire says play on now as Milden Hall makes full distance, as he usually does. Looks for Nelson. Two players up against him. That left one at ground level. Mifka kicks towards the half-forward line. Hall is there. Southern is with him. Southern does best. It's a clever mark. He's a confident young man. <laughs> I mean, he's, he's had to lower his colours all day, but he's still going for his punches. Not much happening for Claremont. The kick goes towards half forward. Charging towards the ball was Painter. He did that pretty well. He's given them a good chance in the centre now. And Milden Hall goes into lens support. Genie backed his judgment, Painter, and it came off. What a good player Brendan Green's been today, Noel. Yeah, he's been very, very busy. Just hasn't been able to quite finish his game off. He had a purple patch here at the start of the uh, at the start of the third quarter when I thought Claremont lifted. It was him and Mitchell that lifted him, and they need another effort from him right now. Gentlemen, a moment ago there was test pattern and music. He had more colours on. <laughs> this is Peniza now from backward of the centre circle to centre half forward. Morgan and from the side kick it was the leaper. And Painter mops up and goes out very wide. Beautiful bounce there for Hasler. He kicks around the boundary line with good vision. Sends Wade Starr away. A little bit of indecision, but he finally squares it up to centre-half forward. Hall's behind, and Smith a good mark. A poor option there by Wade Starr, because he kicked it right to the, uh, the Claremont big man. Southern, back to his judgment there, goes on with it too. And Peniza doesn't let him down, plenty of backup. He drives into the pocket, and Clem unattended. He runs inside 50. He's 15 metres in the clear, steadies and shoots, and he's offline. Should have perhaps done better. You can't knock him today, he's kicked four. Well, we keep saying he's, he's had an in-and-out day, but there he had a perfect opportunity to, to bring Claremont within uh, six points closer. It's time to bring Marathon Man back in. Way you go, Well, The margin is six points at Subiaco Oval. We're five minutes into the final term. Great mark for Smith. Oh, not paid. And the umpire will bounce it just outside Claremont's 50-metre line. The Falcons clinging to a six-point lead. Five minutes into the final quarter of the second semi-final. The winner straight through to the grand final. The loser to play Subiaco in the preliminary final. Smith. Green. Towards full forward. Jerine was a chance. It bounced. The bounce favoured Troy West. This is Jones. Kick it. Got a hand on it. Troy West gets it over the top to Freeman. And now West Perth drive the ball out of defence. Good telling kick. Back goes Malone. 
West Perth will get the kick. Rocky Hasler. He's at left centre wing. High towards half forward. Hall up in front. Takes the mark. Neither side able to mount anything positive in the forward line at the moment. Hall is off. He'll go for distance. Zemplis will be the target. He's up in front. Comes down to Southern. Southern goes to the boundary and puts it out on the floor. That's a terrible kick. Gee. I don't know what he had in mind. Now Hall wanted to take the kick. He's not allowed. There's no one on the mark. The umpire is telling Lambourne he has to come around. And now Southern comes up. He's a very good kick, Lambourne. Well, this is a tough one. It'll go close if he tries. A kick from just inside 50 metres. It will go close. Brayshaw gets a fist to it. Brayshaw's done very well on Zempelis, although the opportunities haven't been as numerous as earlier in the game, Noel. No, that the ball hasn't come down in a different way, and plus a little bit of the adrenaline stopped pumping in Basil as well. Something had to stop pumping. <laughs> Gary Edwards chips over the top and Mark Hand takes the mark in front of Harris. Claremont on the move again. The kick to centre wing. Mifka gets tangled up with uh, Harris and Green wins out. Beat two of them. Kicks to centre half forward. Clem in front. Used his body there on Damon. And that's no mean effort. Two solid customers. He kicks high towards full forward. The target is Jerine. Freeman got his hands to it. Couldn't pull it in. Painter pushes to the boundary, hoping for the white line. And uh, it came up for him. Jared Neesham sent uh, kicking into the forward line, hoping for some of that kick at Magic, but also Geesham's shown a lot of confidence in sending Troy West with him. So He can go with him too, yes, can't he? A, a, a great, uh, a good coaching move there by Geesham. Jerian used his body, but couldn't bring it in. Trying to take clean possession. And Freeman putting plenty of pressure on him there. It's in the right full forward pocket. There's the difference. Nothing between these two sides. The game's still up for grabs as Jerine wins it. Green tackled by Damon, loses it to Clem. He's beset upon. Another bounce. Umpire Pritchard has done a good job today. Jerine gets in front of Freeman. Again, clean possession. Clem to Green, who snaps from the pocket. A bounce towards Moore, who does something you don't see too often. Well, I thought he was, he'd been reincarnated. One point the difference here. Well, if that doesn't lift the Clem on side, I don't know what will. Good play here by Jerine. Clem, busy with his hands. And Green just again, watch mate. this. But he's pretty hard to beat that sort of play, isn't it? How do you no counteract that, Noel? No need to make any comment on that. I mean, they're the sort of things that wins finals. This must give Clem on a lift. Well, I was just about to say that I don't, I haven't seen anything from Claremont that would suggest that they can uh, overcome this deficit, albeit that it's a small one. But Morgan produces something like that as Southern goes forward and did well to knock the ball away from Hall. It bounces favourably for Peneza. His kick has got too much carry and Malone didn't commit oh. himself but gets out of jail. Malone from about 70 metres out kicks towards full forward. Jerine is there and Clem chips in to take the mark. Well... I don't think we've been kind enough to Darren Clemmings, but I, I wouldn't mind betting that he might be carrying some sort of injury. Yes. He did leave the field in the second quarter for a few minutes. It was more the kicks that he gave away that concerned me. He shoots on goal. What's he done? He's kicked it. He's got his fifth. And Clermont are in front. Well, a good effort there by Darren Clem. I'm sure that he's not 100% fit. As I said, he left the field for a while. This was a good steal. Malone... Robbed the ball, and was able to pump the ball forward, and Freeman worried about Jerine. Clem chips in and uh, and uh, puts Claremont in front, and uh, they're going quite well now. Claremont, this, this pattern of this play is similar to the uh, start of the third quarter, where it was a little bit quiet, then all of a sudden Claremont got a little run on. Nelson and Smith, even Stevens. Nelson, the second chance. Edwards. Well, he didn't have it according to the umpire. One of those. Grey areas in football. Edwards, a drop punt towards full forward. Hall in the middle. Crumbs, Curley, run down by Peniza. He lost it. Brayshaw's there with him is Zempelis. Zempelis traps it cleverly. Peniza's got him though. And gives him, a, gives him a little nudge to go on with. 
That's on rock, Darrell. Smith wins the tap. Chance for Panizza. It's it to Leach. And the Tigers run it out of trouble. And the mark has been taken here by Gary Edwards on right centre wing. We'll get on with it. Comments from Noel Carter. Drop punt towards full forward. Freeman behind. Damon raving the side of the pack. Beaten by Clem again. It didn't bounce favourably. Came back to Morgan. He gives it to Clem at ground level. Now a chance here for Muir. Gets away from Jones. Muir drills the hand pass. Measured to Mitchell who couldn't control it. Loses his footy. He's caught. Pay on says the umpire. Now he'll bounce it. And Mitchell a bit lucky to get away with that. A bit of good work there by the West Perth defence as well. Very strong work. But I can't help... Should comment here, I, th I think, on the uh, on uh, the Joe Smith factor. I think he's had a lot to do with the Claremont resurgence here in these last few minutes. He's really working very hard. Claremont lead by five points. Kicker tried to do the lot himself, and he's caught. So there'll be another bounce at the top of the Claremont Square. Todd Curley off. And Valentine on. Bounce down about 20 metres out from Claremont's goal. Jerine got best position, and Morgan has missed. Well, he's having a lousy day there. It was too easy, that <laughs> one. <laughs> Should have tried to volley it. I don't think he expected it to come from there. Well, he, after that sensational goal, he just kicked prior to that. It's a bit, it's a bit hard to top that off. Impossible. Freeman waiting for the ball to come back. Just over 13 minutes gone in the final quarter. Second semi-final between Claremont and West Perth. Claremont led by 13 points at quarter time. Two points at half time. West Perth led by seven points at three quarter time. And now Claremont, six points in front at the 14-minute mark of the final term. Good clearing kick by Freeman, out in the direction of Nelson. But the mark is taken by Morgan. He's come to life now. Yes, he's uh, really lifted his rating. Probably was asked for a bigger effort from his coach and has come up with a good so far. Morgan is at right half forward, too far out to score. But he puts it well to within kicking distance. Valentine up in front, almost took the mark. He recovers it well at ground level, goes looking for the boundary line, he doesn't find it. Malone has it, hemmed in, and puts it out of play on the full. Not much room to operate there, Robbie Malone. Jones has recovered from that heavy knock he received from Green a short time ago. We've seen stars for a while. He gives it to the captain, it's a safe way to go. He kicks to half back. Mifka's in front of hand, bounces awkwardly, knocked away there, and Clem off in pursuit. He goes inboard, kick it, good vision. That left green unattended again, he runs inside 50, he's run a full measure, goes right across the face with his kick and going back with a good mark. I think it is Hasler. Green put, put himself under too much pressure there by trying to beat that man. He should have went earlier and uh, went more direct to goal. He plays on to Nelson. Nelson makes five or ten metres and then kicks to the outer side of the ground. Valentine's out there with Edwards, pair of 27s. Edwards got his fist to that. Mitchell again loses his footing, allows Starr in. Mitchell with him. And the umpire says, I'll bounce it again. <laughs> he said, the ball's over here. <laughs> be difficult to find out who was actually on top of the ball, wouldn't it? One straight kick separating the teams. Claremont have wrested the initiative away. Halfway through this last term, it's still anybody's game. Suviaco already through to the preliminary final with their win over Swans. Nelson, Morgan, clean possession. Well done, but he's caught now. Got the hand pass in. Green, a sharpshooter. Kicks to the square. Jerine has it fisted away by Edwards. Clem is after it. Pushes it in front of his body. Chance now for Kickett. Kickett loses it. Got it somehow to hand, who feeds... Valentine who goes short and again Green being let loose. That was a very, very clever handball by Dale Kickett there. Oh, Trevor, it was that quick that you thought he'd lost, but he went straight between the legs of, uh, of Mark Hand. You can see there Green's been very busy, something like 21 kicks I think we saw on, the, on your screen and uh, been a very, very influential player. What you were saying is he would have got around me. <laughs> now you see it, now you don't. Yeah, it's an old trick. Brendan Green, flat punt. Offline. Oh, was it touched? No. Oh, gee. Gee, that was that was a helicopter torpedo. <laughs> Lux of fortune there for Claremont. Morgan's goal, and now that one would be enough to break anybody's spirit, wouldn't it? 
Yes, this was really well, this good is, luck. This it? is this build up we saw, and here's that quick hands. Didn't go actually through the legs, it went around him, but Ballantyne settled there and found Green, who's been a prolific uh, kick getter today, and he, he finished off, as we said, with that helicopter type drop punt. Well, the West Perth supporters want a response from their team here as Nelson knocks it towards centre half forward. Again, they're not favoured by the bounce. The head pass from Gary Edwards finds Green. He gets it away under pressure, taken by Simmons. Now Mifka has it. Mifka propping on centre wing. He's caught, gets out of the tackle, gets it ahead of the play to Toby, who was run down brilliantly by Panizza. Star it was, I'm sorry. This is Southern now. Chips the ball up onto centre wing, and Claremont get out of trouble. He Gary hesitates. Edwards has it. Mifka hesitated too long, Noel. Yes, needed to get on with it. We've spoke about players getting on with it throughout the game. The kick goes in the direction of Morgan. Jones couldn't pull it in. Morgan gets the ball back somehow. That was intended for Clem. It wasn't a good hand pass. First back to it will be Damon. He slaps it towards the boundary line. Painter maintains control of it cleverly. His kick isn't a good one. It was a half volley for Valentine. Comes towards Mifka again. He's in all sorts of trouble. Did well to keep it in play and to actually get it to O'Brien. But Claremont gang tackling, to use the hackneyed word at the moment. The kick goes towards half forward. Back goes Nelson. But it lands with Mitchell. Well, I'm not sure that the player who kicked that knew that Mitchell was there. Well, Mitchell called for it, and I was going to say what a great kick by Quentin well, Leach because he weighed that up, yeah. he saw that. You can see Mitchell's been very, very busy, creative with those 12 handballs. Every one of them's hit the uh, hit the button, but this, at this stage he's got a chance to add another goal to the Claremont score. Well, if Leach knew he was there, then it was a brilliant kick because it was perfectly weighted. There goes the shot at goal from Kevin Mitchell. Looks good enough from here. And all of a sudden... Claremont are three goals in front. Well, put that goal down to Quentin Leach because Wally, as sure as we're sitting up here in this box, he aimed that ball at Mitchell. Mitchell had already created, created the space. I thought Mifka was a little lax here. He didn't try and use the ball well enough. Put O'Brien under a heap of pressure. Dale kick it with quick hands, and here he is, steadied, weighed up the kick, over the top of Nelson, potted it straight into Mitchell's arms. Claremont in the box seat to advance to the grand final. Nelson and Smith. Nelson just got it down. Milton Hall found a path. Long kick towards full forward. Freeman in front. No free kick there. And Panizza gets it across towards Valentine, who kicks it out on the fall. Good pressure there from West Perth, but where's Milton Hall been for this, this quarter? He's played a pretty good game. He has played a good game, but he's just been missing in this, in this uh, final, in these final 10 or 15 minutes when the ball game's been there to be won. So the free kick with Basil Zimpolis, who's kicked five. And that'll land just outside the square. Smith sets. Up he goes. Trying to bash through his hall. And he has the ball held to him by Southern. And Brayshaw's under there somewhere. Here he is. Nelson. Didn't tap it anywhere. Smith. And pass was blocked. Valentine pushes it to hand, spins around Simmons and does it well. David to Leach, that was unnecessary, but they got away with it. Not yet. Kick it! <laughs> and hand goes right across the goal face and kicks it to Scott Edwards and picks out a man. Edwards to half back and kick it up in front. West was with him, still let's kick it. They had to give a bit of it at the finish. Now taken by Lamborn, who scrambles along the boundary, and it's out of bounds in the left full forward pocket. The umpire is down. I think he's OK. It's also important here to say that uh, West Perth have been the conquerors of Claremont on three occasions they've met this, this year, as Zemplis comes off, so that might give the West Perth supporters and players some hope, some heart. Smith, a big tap. Mitchell and Milton Hall, and Smith again. Good endeavour shown by Joe Smith. Malone. Well, his first intention was to get rid of the man, and he lost it in the tackle. Claremont running the clock down, still some time to go in this game, but a big drop ahead of West Perth from here, Well, Well, there's still time for them to win it, Trevor. You just wonder if they've got the energy left, and they get the benefit of a free kick in that passage. It'll be taken by Lamborn, who realises the urgency of the situation. He wants to get things moving. Looks towards the pocket, Simmons has made the lead, Ballantyne is with him, Scott Edwards at the back and the throw will be at left full forward. 
West Perth haven't kicked a goal in 22 uh, odd minutes of the quarter and I've, we've, all through the season we've looked at all their, most of their scoring they've, they've been a low scoring side we've had Zemplers come in and kick five goals for the day but you know apart from his effort we, we haven't had a lot other than Curly, I just don't know whether they've got enough prowess across that half forward long to be able to snatch a couple of quick goals now. Well, they actually scored less points this season than every other team except the bottom team. Seventh lowest in points four, which is remarkable for a team that finished at the top of the ladder as Edwards goes down. It was at Leach. It was Leach, and the umpire has ruled that he was tripped, I think. Now, Southern is loose in the centre of the ground. That's the way the kick goes, but Starr will get back on him. Running hard alongside him was Green. Green kicks the ball towards the outer flank. Good mark. Cleverly taken out there. This is Malone backpedalling. He's able to get around Hasler. Chips it down in the direction of Morgan. And uh, Harris prepares to come off the ground for West Perth. And I sense that Clemont may have just about done enough. Here's Clem. Claimed by Damon. Good tackle. No easy kicks against Wayne Damon, no matter what the state of play. In comes Kickett. Oh, brilliantly done, but he lost it at the crucial moment. Extricates himself from the pack very cleverly, but Pretty a teammate gave away the kick off the ball. Poor option there by Morgan. He should have went long into the goal square where Jerome was one out with his opposition. Milton Hall finessing in defence. Kicks towards the wing on the outer side. Oh, the leaper oh. there was Southern. Comes down to West Perth Suvi, who thumps towards full forward. Curly in front. Just came off the bench too. Todd Curley. His forte is his marking. A pair of 11s there. Valentine and Curley too strong. Harris limps off. Curley underneath the kick. It won't reach. Smith up. In the pack was Freeman. Brayshaw bops up for the Tigers and heads straight towards the boundary. Good defensive work. Experienced defensive work by Mark Rayshaw. He called Freeman then, Geeshan swung his players around now looking for just some sort of, uh, I suppose it really need to be miracle now to kick two or three goals to get back into this game or even win the game. Smith, Nelson beats him, stars there, goes to ground, Green is possessed by Curley and Green runs it over. But Curley was being held according to the umpire. I don't think the Claremont supporters would be too impressed with that. Geeshan looks a little worried now. Hasn't had a great day, Todd Curley, although he's been in the goal kickers with three. That's not a bad kick either. It's sneaked in for four now. And I suppose the flame still flickers now. It, there's ever so slightly it's flickering, but it, he's the type of player I was looking, trying to allude to before. They needed something across that line. I know he's kicked the four goals, but it's been a lone effort between him and, uh, and Basil Zemplis to kick the goals. It was a very, very good kick from the boundary line. It's a good kick from that pocket. Yes. They're hard to kick from there. And has given West Perth a slight flicker of hope. Well, the margin is just 12 points, and Nisham has swung Dale Kickett into, into defence as a spare man as Lamborn takes it out of the centre. There's still a chance for West Perth. Back goes Leach. Up over the top was O'Brien. Leach crashes into an opponent. Through He's comes Southern. Curly's got Free kick to West Perth. Another one to Curley. Curley is just outside 50 metres. He can kick it in short. He's going to go for distance. It'll drop short. Important at the fall of the ball. Chance for Simmons. Kick straight into Hendry. It comes towards O'Brien. He oh, goes yeah. down under a solid tackle. Clever with a chance to relieve the pressure. Back in the direction of Han. And he comes across the top of Curley and puts it out of play. And hurt himself. Might be a cramp, I think. Courageous play by both players there. Hand fell awkwardly. 15, 12 to 14, 6. Claremont by 12 points, just into time on. Chance for Dale kick it, even he can't pick it up at the moment. Comes back the other way. Clever hand pass to, to Gary Edwards. Appeared to throw it. Lamborn has it. Here's trouble for Claremont. It goes back towards full forward. Up at the back was Simmons. Chance for Simmons. He rakes it clear towards Star. Desperate defence by the Claremont backman. Simmons has bundled off the ball. Ballantyne and Simmons go again. Oh, that was terrific play by Simmons. He was involved in three or four encounters and just persisted and has at least held it in that full forward area. Throwing it left full forward for the Falcons. They trail by 12 points. Up goes Southern and Hall and they thump it back from whence it came. Into time on, well. Still time for the West Perth time. Though. This game's not over yet. There's been a few goals scored in this quarter. West Perth have only kicked one of them. But Claremont have kicked four. 
Nelson from behind, taken by Green, took a long time, gets caught but gets a hand pass of sorts away in the direction of Panizza. He'll go to the boundary line, he can't, for, yes he can find it. Desperation there by Daryl Panizza, bit of experience again. Quite a few of these Tigers have had final round experience unlike their West Perth counterparts. Maybe that's just telling at the moment. Nelson tried to get his kick in but couldn't do that. Mitchell didn't have control of it. West pushes it forward. O'Brien kicked it straight up in the air. Nelson's camped underneath it and Smith fists it away. Clem's now camped there. West over the top of him. Smith got caught by Mitchell. Chance for West. With him was kick it. Green goes without it. Clem. Cool under pressure and heads straight for the boundary and finds it. Some relief there for Clement. I thought uh, Paul Mifka took, took the wrong option then. He should have get, laid it off for the guy cutting through the other way. 27 He's minutes gone. Straight for goal. Claremont lead. 102 to 90. Two straight kicks in the game still. And I'd say they'll hang on from here. Craig Nelson very, very tired uh, there, Wally. Trevor, done a tremendous job. Smith. He's got a good leap on him, Joe Smith. He won that tap decisively over Nelson. Malone finishes up with it. His kick is out of bounds on the full. And so West Perth with a chance to drive it into their forward line off the boot of Mifka. Or Hasler. Hasler it is. No. Mifka now. Kicks to half forward. Hall almost pulled down the mark. He was under pressure from Southern. But here's a hand passes to O'Brien. Bad mistake by the veteran. But O'Brien misses. Well done, Hey, what happened? There's the siren. Claremont are through to the grand final. West Perth to Mitsubiaco in the preliminary final next week. So for the first time this year, the Tigers down the Falcons. 15-12-102. The 14-7-91. The Tigers are through. And halfway through the year that certainly didn't look feasibility no can't it, it no didn't they started off early although we've mentioned a couple of times Claremont in that early rounds they lost uh, they, they lost several games three or four of them by less than seven or eight ten points and they were they were almost there and just, they hadn't quite put the finishing touches on but now they are starting to really put the cream on the cake